Well, we have made it back to the chat room another Saturday, and I am so happy that I get to spend this hour with you. I look forward to it every week, and I hope that you look forward to coming to spend this hour with me. Got another great show lined up for you today, um, but as I always say, I hope that my 94.7 FM family, I hope that you are taking care of you and that you are doing well because we want you guys to be to be well and to be safe. Um, Make sure that you are going to our Dr. to Dr. in the chat room Facebook page, as well as our Dr. to Dr. YouTube channel. Make sure that you're going to both of those places. Do that for me. It won't take but a second for you to go to that page and uh, the, the YouTube page and just hit subscribe. Go to that Facebook page and follow and hit like. Do that for me. I would appreciate it. The last time I asked you guys to do that, um, we got about 800 and something of those uh, subscribers as well as followers on the Facebook page. So thank you, thank you, thank you for doing that. Um, our guest today, Tamara, Tamara McRoy. She is an advocate, public speaker, and a change agent missionary. She's known for being a headstrong transaction strategy and execution leader in the Central Florida community with ties across the United States. Tam holds multiple degrees with the highest being her MS in Human Services with a concentration in social policy analysis and planning. She is certified in project management essentials and is Lean Six Sigma Yellow Belt certified. Tam also holds certif certificates in case management services, co-occurring disorders, and holds prof a professional certificate in addiction counseling. She uses her certification as an addictions awareness facilitator to teach about drug and alcohol precautions and methods of recovery. Tam is the owner and chief program project management consultant for management and consultant Favor LLC. In her role, she works with human service across human services across the country in helping them develop and implement strengthened business operations to further push their organizational missions of being able to help those living in local neighborhoods. She is the founder and president of Maternal Matters Favored, a 501c3 organization. The mission is to provide counseling and support services to women with prenatal perinatal and postpartum mood disorders. Tam is a member of the Seminole County chapter for the NAACP and newly elected prison branch chair. She is a board of directors member for the Seminole County Board of Commissioners, Seminole County Con Contractor Examiner Board. She is a ISO LSS World Conference Committee member and a member of the Florida Rising State Leadership Council and the Eatonville Chamber of Conver Commerce. Tamara is a Central Florida Legislative Liaison for the National Alopecia Arieta Foundation and a board member for the Central Florida Alopecia Support Group. She is a board of directors member and the governance committee chair for the Center for Inter Interdependent Living. And she is a peer counselor for postpartum support International and and is their Central Florida Regional Chair for the Alliance BIPOC Division. She sat on the Sim Dems Diversity and Inclusion Committee and is their outgoing secretary. She is the past president for the National Organization for Women Seminole County Chapter and the past co-chair for the Alzheimer's Association Central and North Florida Chapter, the Longest Day Committee. And we are so very excited to have her in the chat room on Dr. to Dr. with us today. Welcome, welcome to the show, Tam. It's so great to have you here. I am so excited excited to be here. Thank you so much for this opportunity. <laughs> hear more about the work that you do want to hear about how you landed here how did how did you get here so um tell me a little more I've, I've told the audience a lot about you but tell me a little more about your work and how you actually landed here oh my gosh um where do I even begin and and so um 
You know, as you guys know, I, I have a project management consulting firm just for years, um, just working in that that arena, you know, um, mm -hmm. with the government. So we worked with all the three letter names, right? CBP, ICE, TSA, IRS, and so forth and so on. Um, and just it rolling over to other aspects of my career and just being able to utilize that skill set and some of the tools and things to that effect. Um it led me to starting a, a project management consulting firm. And so, you know, I, I had a, a previous coworker reach out who went into private practice for herself and kind of wanted to make certain that she was still in compliance with some of the regulatory statutes and things to that effect and needed some help with some insurance billing and so forth and so on. And of course, you know, we no longer carry out those services because, you know, each year you do kind of evaluation and you look and how you can scale up the business, right? And, and mm -hmm. so forth. Um, and so, but yeah, so that's where it started because I, I started to realize that a lot of these human service providers, and we're talking about those that are um, licensed clinical social workers, psychologists, behavior analysts, nonprofit organizations, they don't have the know-how or even the bandwidth to be able to, one, sustain, you know, operations, become um, in compliance for different funding opportunities when you think about the grants and things to that effect that come out for um, mental health, substance use, and even behavioral health services and so forth. And and so forth and so on. And so it really led into that morphing um, and, and just me being able to go in these days and, and um, have a project team. And, you know, we do these monitoring and assessments and we work to get some grant funds in folks' hands so that, you know, the mom and pop organizations are able to provide yeah. these life-changing services. You know, when we think about, you know, the individuals that they provide, um, you know, counseling to, you know, they need it. You yeah. know, and regrettably, sometimes, you know, insurance companies, there's those barriers and, and restrictions and access um, points where they're not able to receive it. Right. And so that's how that started. Um, Maternal Matters Favored is is my heartbeat right there. Um, and so that's my 501c3. And um, it's for perinatal and postpartum um, mood disorders. And so we work to provide counseling, support groups. Um, we even have a, a support um, a support group on Tuesdays in a life skills program that we're actually working to start. And for me, um, why I say it's a heartbeat is because, you know, I have a son who's 20, right? And, you know, 21 years ago when I was pregnant, it was no conversations about how's my psyche, how's my my preparation plan for being mm -hmm. a new mom, what is my living conditions. It was just like baby's heartbeat, vitals. You want some wick? <laughs> you know what I mean? And, let's and <laughs> we'll see. You know, and, yeah. and you know, I was I was struggling, you know, and and dealing with so many different levels of anxiety that morphed into uh, the postpartum um, depression and anxiety that actually led into a level of psychosis. And in order for wow. me to start dealing and coping with life, I actually started using drugs, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, this this year in March, I was able to celebrate 18 years clean and sober. But when I tell people I don't look like I've been through what yeah. I've been through, I, I promise you, right? And yeah. so for me, you know, just being active in the community um, and wanting to do my due diligence and my part, I um, I started with the Postpartum Support International, um, their organization where they, they provide all kinds of services to this population, this underserved population. And I was able to start doing some peer counseling. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and mentoring moms with a specific focus on substance use. And um, and at the same time, God was leading me to actually start and develop and, you know, um, incorporate this business. And for a minute there it was like, uh, I'm in corporate America. I don't have the bandwidth, it, it, uh, you know, um, but just so many different opportunities. And, and he just kept giving me those green lights. It's like, all right, let me be obedient. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, and you're so stealing my thunder because I'm like, so when you were when you were doing the consulting, were you still in the workforce? That's my first question. Yes. And and so I've um I'm one of those that I, I work dual in multiple roles. You know, even right now I, I I'm in corporate America. I'm a I'm a project manager for a corporation and um it's still within that realm of working with mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. funds and making certain those in a behavioral health and mental health field. Got it. Yeah. So what what would you say, you know, because you say I heard you say God is like he's he kept giving you all these signs. Right. And you finally listen. So what would you say to somebody? Because I I just interviewed somebody recently that, you know, we talked about the fear 
we we talked about that fear of you know taking that leap right um what would you say to someone because i'm sure whatever challenges there are you probably experienced at least some of them what would you say to someone that that needs to take that That part i love it um the hardest part is just getting started you know what i mean and so you have to map this thing out you know i tell people all the time when i do workshops or speaking engagements you know we're not building our houses on sand you know what i mean so Mm -hmm. make certain that you have everything kind of in a sense laid out and just chip at it don't quit your day job you know Mm -hmm. what i mean right Mm -hmm. um but work to put certain different aspects of operations in place you know do your research get with some SMEs that are in the community you know so i consider myself a SME, and sometimes when i don't know i go to a guru (laughs) you know what i mean yeah and so forth um but don't you don't never know until you try you know what i mean and and i tell this to people all the time and nothing beats a failure but a try. You'll come away with some lessons learned and you'll be able to reapply yourself next time in a in a better fashion. Yeah, and one of the things that the person I was interviewing said was uh, his name is Coach James Bond and he's a life coach. And he, he said, you'd just be surprised at how many people, successful people, and he made that the operative word successful people that are willing to help you, that are willing to mentor you, that are willing to pour into you and and give you, you know, share some knowledge. I think a lot of times we think we're on this island by ourselves when we're really not. We just have to ask. You just have to ask, just put it out there. You know, um, this is, you know, me maintaining and and, and being in corporate America. And I was out of it for a while, you know, um, and, but, you know, I have to follow my heart and give back to the community. So I love that you brought that up because, you know, when I'm, I'm working with these smaller organizations, lesser grossing organizations, You know, um, it's one of those things where you see the need, you see the potential, and you want to help them actually achieve that, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, for a while, a lot of my friends would be like, you are the queen of discounts. You know what I mean? (laughs) Like, you're a new client discount, returning client discount. You know what I mean? Yes. But, you know, when you're passionate, you know what I mean, and and your heart is in the right place, yeah, you're going to do that. And so for those that are out there listening, that goes back to what Rhonda just said, you know, you you know, you don't know until you ask. Mm-hmm. You don't know at all. Mm-hmm. You've mentioned several organizations that you've worked with. What, which, which ones do you typically work with and what kinds of things specifically? Like walk me through something that you would do, you know, for an organization. That part. Um, and so it really varies, you know, um, these days it's, it's really specific to, um, once more, we're still in the human services field, right? Mm-hmm. Um, still working with licensed clinical social workers, mental health, behavioral health, substance abuse providers. That is my passion. That's my heartbeat. Um, I do take on some unadvertised, you know, um, work just helping. It was a woman that wanted to start a cake business, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? And I was like, fine. You know what I mean? Um, but so, you know, if you come to me and you're like, Tam, I, I I have this vision. All right, let's map out the vision. You know what I mean? Let's put, make certain that your mission, you can put that into place. Let's talk about strategies. You know, what does it look like? What population do you want to serve? You know what I mean? What's the areas of expertise? Is there licensing needed and so forth and so on? You know, when you think about maybe some assisted living facilities, you know, um, I have a client. And so last year we wrote a grant for um the Leon County Children's Services Council for a little over $98,000. And that's not much, some people say, but it was for a three-month program. It was for a summer program. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we worked to map that thing out, you know, Mm -hmm. crossing T's, dotting Mm -hmm. I's, Mm -hmm. and and being able to provide all those different things. So um, project management, you know, I'll help you build out a program. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I have a group of brothers out in California some years ago. They wanted to start a supported living services program. And so we went ahead and and made certain that we were able to speak to some of the aspects in which they were going to carry out, you know, some of the partnerships, you know, and collaborations that they were going to do to help support services. So it's it's all a whole big thing that we work to get it done. And and this is where I tell folks, you know, um, I've been doing this for a minute, right? And and so I 
it's it's part of my assignment, I feel like, you know, to be able to help pour into the next individual so they can go ahead and give it back. And and so another big thing that um, is a, a line of service that I provide is a, a risk and quality assessment, right? When we're talking okay. about quality management, risk and risk management. Risk management. So you know, we'll go in and we'll look at, you know, what is what do your client files look like? What do your financial files look like? You know, how compliant are you are with the state, with city regulations? A lot of times individuals don't even know that they, they should have a business tax receipt from their local counties, you know? Mm -hmm. And even though it may not be mandated to a certain extent, you could get a non-regulated one. It only costs like $25. Yeah. You know what I mean? But what I've seen is that, you know, not even having that little piece, I've run into where it's prohibited a person from being able to get a minority woman business certification. Uh -huh. Right. And so when we mm -hmm. think about things and how it ripples and we're talking about mm -hmm. building our house um, you know, on stable ground, it's little things like that. It's like, OK, that's just a meal. You know, you mm -hmm. go to McDonald's these days and spend twenty five dollars, you know. Yeah. What I mean? So yeah. it's it's those type of things that I help enlighten um, providers with, you know, regards to how we can enhance their business operations. You want that thing at optimal performance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so your background is, I mean, I, of course I, I read your bio, but I mean, your background has to be quite diverse for you to be able to go into any organization and do this because like I've done compliance, but in the area that I did it in, I could not do what you do. You, 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 you understand what I'm saying? Like I wouldn't, I only know what to look for in certain organizations or certain arenas um you obviously have a really diverse background um yeah you know i i've, I've worked really hard to try to stay i call it my lane right in my uh -huh. passion and and so you know with my master's being there in human services it's like i know i only want to focus on these certain domains of operations okay. you know what i mean i am um, i actually just completed a um, addictions counseling program why? Because one, I work in that realm, so I'm able to speak the same language and have the same lens as mm -hmm. some of my clients. And two, because it's something that I do, right, um, yeah. where I'm providing counseling services. And so mm -hmm. it's those type of mindsets, and I, I call them strategies, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And I tell people all the time, strategy is not a catchphrase, you know what I mean? Yeah. And look yeah, it yeah. up in a dictionary, apply it, <laughs> do it. You know, you have to strategize. And, um, and so that's how that started. Um, but really going back, my mom taught me to have two careers when I was growing up. She did that back in the day, you know, um, she was like, have one where you're standing on your feet when you're young and one when you're able to sit down when you're older. And so it was wow. always that mindset right that advice. I had, mm -hmm. you know, um, what am I doing here? You know, so yeah, I'm a project manager. Yep. We could go ahead and build you out a program and make certain your project is, you know, meeting timelines and the budget and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, you know, just working to provide uh, those core counseling support services and so forth and so on. Um, I want to talk more about um, what, how you determine your success rate. Like, how are you measuring um, what you do for organizations, like, in a quantitative kind of way? Let's talk uh, about that. Let's talk about that when we come back from break. We are at break and we will be right back in a moment on Dr. The Doctor in the chat room on 94.7 FM. And we are still here on 94.7 FM. I am talking to Ms. Tam McRoy and she is sharing a lot about the work that she does, the great work that she does. Um, talk about how you measure the success of the work that you do since you are helping all of these organizations. What, what does that look like? How do you measure that? Absolutely. Um, and so with the project management consulting firm, um, I've been able to measure it by return clients, right? Or word of mouth advertisement. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'm here in Central Florida and this was my starting zone. And, mm -hmm. you know, to get and have clients in Cali, Texas, New Jersey, 
And I'm not doing advertising like that, right? It was just yeah. really, hey, I know someone who said that they, you know, you did some work for them. Can you do this for me? Can you do that? And that's really how that blossomed for me. And so that right there goes, it, it speaks volumes because, you know, if you're doing crummy work, uh, you're going <laughs> to, you know, you're going to know by me. That's going to get around too. <laughs> that part, right? Um, and so that's how I measure it, you know. Um, and then with regards to, you um, the the 501c you know where we're providing counseling and support group services and so you know I am um, when I get to see some of my my mentees as I call them you know um excel you know and and start to reach back out and just give me updates mm -hmm. that right there is like yep you know, checking boxes, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Um, just to make certain once more that you're doing your due diligence. And, and mm -hmm. another thing um, that recently occurred is that um, we had some nursing students in a doula in, in, in one of my groups. And it was like, you guys, you know, some services, some support group, you know, and they were like, yeah. you know, we've heard about you and, you know, we have some um, practicum hours that we need to get mm -hmm. and so forth. And so that right there, you know, sometimes, you know, when we're looking at things on a qualitative and quantitative aspect, mm -hmm. you know, we, we need to kind of think outside the box on what that mm -hmm. actually looks like, you mm -hmm. know, and it's those little tokens uh, that really kind of stick it for, for me at least. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What, what about the 501c3 in terms of when you started it, you know, the funding, how, wh what was that process like, you know, going after funding? I heard you say you've written grants and all of that. Like, um, you know, how did, how did you know what was out there? You know, I hear people all the time say, oh, I need some grants. Like, I need to find some grants and people don't really know where to go. That part, um, you know, there's a lot of, um, of small business development centers, um, a lot of information that you can find online and you can select to become um, notified of when funding opportunities are released, right? Mm -hmm. And so if it's a NOFO, a notice of funding opportunity or RFP, you know, request for proposals, things to that effect, you want to look for something that's in your, your realm of operations. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it was um, making certain that I was connected to the state of Florida, mm -hmm. uh, their, um, their procurement office, um, you know, there's a lot of different maternal and uh, mental health type of um, government entities that release funding and so forth. And so it was those things. You have to do your due diligence you and do some research, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and so it's, it's those type of things. But for the most part, self-funded, you know what I mean? In the beginning, you know, just and when you're dedicated to bringing something to fruition, you know, you're going to put the certain strides in place, the mechanisms and so forth and so on. You're going to make those sacrifices so that you can make that investment, you know. And for me, when I, I sit back and I think, you know, with regards to from which I've come and for what I want, you know, and I think about legacy building, you know, mm -hmm. um, that's where I'm at. You know, I, and, and so like with my consulting firm, I am I am an employee, right? I get paid ten dollars an hour and I'm only allowed to be paid for 10 hours a month. Right. Because it's not really about that for me. You know, of course, you know, when you think about as a business person, you have your operating expenses and things to that effect. Mm -hmm. And then also because of the fact that I do provide, you know, very reasonable pricing. Right. And then at the same time, um, as the founder and president of the nonprofit, I don't take on a. a a salary, you yeah. know, or, or even yeah. hourly, um, hour, hourly, you know, in fact, I actually give and donate just because, right. And, and so a lot of times once more, you know, if you're looking to start, whether it's a, pro a for-profit or a nonprofit, you have to make certain that you are dedicated and you have certain things laid out and you just chip away at it. It, it doesn't have to be huge cinder blocks, you know, but some progress is better than no progress. Mm hmm you mentioned that when you, you know, you had your son and you were kind of in a dark place and you, you got into drugs. Tell us more about your personal story and even how it is the work that you're doing. Oh, you know, I'm actually writing a book and I, I released awesome. chapter one of it. Um, yeah, um, I, I did. And so I released chapter one of it, but it, I, you know, I went really out there to the point that when I got my life back together, my son thought I was his aunt. So like when wow. I tell people I get it, I 
promise you, I get it. Right. Um, and, you know, and so I found myself in parallels of no longer having a job, no longer having a place to live, lost the respect and support of some family members and so forth out there on the streets, prostituting, right. Stripping mm -hmm. and so forth in and out of jails, rehabs, um, you know, you name it. Right. Mm -hmm. And I had to fight really hard um, mm -hmm. to, to reestablish myself, you know, and, and realign myself and get things back in place. And my, um, rock bottom, because rock bottom for everyone is different, yep. you know, um, but after about a year and a half, um, of it, right. Um, and being in and out of jail just for little things. Cause I wasn't from, you know, like out there. Right. So, you know, I get caught with paraphernalia, you know, or, you know, the last thing was a, a cocaine charge. Mm -hmm. And, you know, by the grace of God, when they found it on me, they didn't, they didn't bring me in. They just gave me a citation to appear in court. So, you know, close to like almost a year later, you know, I'm out there doing the same thing. Right. And I mm -hmm. call it being at the right place, being at the wrong place at the right time, mm -hmm. because the cops came in, and kind of, you know, who's this, where's your ID kind of a thing. And I provided my information and actually had a warrant. I was in a whole different county in South Florida and had a warrant all the way back in Central Florida, right? And so after sitting in jail for some months and then going to court, the judge was like, oh, you're a repeat offender. Let's go ahead and give you a year and a day. Mm -hmm. Or you can do six months at a DOC rehabilitation center. And so it was like one of those kind of things. And it was then that I started to apply the tools and the information that was being provided to me. You know, like I had gotten tired of touching that stove, of walking around that mountain, yeah. you know, and getting uh -huh. the same results. Uh -huh. And, you know, and I worked, worked myself, you know, to once more just get back in alignment with being a a a citizen, mm -hmm. you know, um, and, and started, you know, really low at a sub shop and, you know, in this program. And then after the program ended, because it was only a six month program and, you know, they make you work, they make you save money. So I was nervous that I had this money, yeah. you know, save. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went, right. I went and put myself voluntarily in another program for a year. And in that program, I worked those steps and saved some more money. But by that time, I was actually rebuilding relationships with my mom, my dad, you know, my son, um, my in-laws, you know, they're, I call them my village people because they, mm -hmm. they loved me from afar, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. they supported me when they saw that I started doing right. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I don't even know where I would be, right? Yeah. Kind of a thing. And, you know, as I started to work myself and, and then getting going to school and going for my associates and, and then moving on to, you know, the bachelor's, master's, whatever have you, it's like, bam, you know what I mean? One foot in front of the other. That's why I always tell people, you know, one of the hardest things is just getting started. But once you actually get started and, and you have your like mind You said earlier, just chip away at it. Yeah. One day at a time. And then it's been ups, it's been downs and so forth. But knowing that God has, has provided a level of grace and favor, you know what I mean? So that's why if you look at the, the titles of, of my organizations, Management and Consultative Favor, you know, Maternal Matters Favor, because God blesses us with certain levels of favor. And it's our job to do our due diligence, you know what I mean? Just get in alignment with his will for, you know, for our lives, for your life and, and do what you need to do. And so, you know, for me, it was like, okay, you know, when I started doing self-work in, in my evolution, and I call it self-actualization, um, mm -hmm. right? It was like, oh, I get it. It was part of my assignment to go through those things. You blessed me. You provided me favor and grace. You covered me, you know what I mean? To come out without any, any, uh, you know, diseases, you know, with my, my mindset, you know what I mean? And have so much life ahead of me. I was supposed to be able to go through those things so that way I can help the next person. I can win the next soul, you know what I mean? And so forth and so on. It's like, okay, got it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let's do it. I'm on yeah. board now. He has made it make sense. So speaking of helping others, what is it like working with people that are uh, challenged with substance abuse? You know, um, it's, it's eye-opening. You know, because I, it makes me reflect on, oh, I'm, I, I'm, I can, I can remember when I was mm -hmm. in that state, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so forth. But at the same time, it's, it's really rewarding because you get to roll up your sleeves and speak to them from a place, you know, in which you can connect. And it's not like, Hey, 
I get it. I know kind of thing. And let me tell you my sob story kind of thing, okay. but more so telling them certain aspects and ways in which they can maneuver to once more elevate in life. You know what I mean? Let me, let me pin this to you a different way and tell you some of the options that you have. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, these are choice decisions that you, you're to make, you know, mm -hmm. but I want to always present you with, you know, what that looks like if you take the blue pill or if you take the red pill yeah. kind of a thing. Um, and then I, I also, I always give my mentees homework when we're talking about self-work, you know, um, what does it look like? What is your, your um, support group look like, right? What is your, your sphere of influence? What are, what are some resources you have? How are you feeling about yourself? What are some of those goals? What are some, some things that you possibly want to change? Right. And, and I, every, every week, you know, when we connect, it's like, how did it go? You know, what, what were you able to check off your list? And also another thing I'm, what is, what are you rewarding yourself with? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because sometimes we get, I gotta get this done, I gotta get this done. Pause, breathe, reflect, right? Okay. You know, um, and sometimes, you know, I had this one mom and she was at home mom and she was, oh, kind of thing, right? And I was like, okay, well, you know, if this is your your sec your sector, right? You know, when you get the baby down for a nap, give yourself seven cookies, you know what I mean? Whatever. Yeah. Just like yeah, little yeah. reward systems for yourself mm -hmm. that you can do, you know, on a shoestring budget and just look at it differently. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, it, it's truly been rewarding, you know, from the work that I've been able to do with Postpartum Support International and, and then also do with my nonprofit as well. And, um, it, at the end of the day, it's like, you know what, God, you get all the glory. You know, this is this is where you're at. And I'm very big on that. I'm we're gonna praise God and hallelujah yeah. all day long. Yeah. What what is it like when you are working with someone in that in that realm and they struggle? They don't mm -hmm. they don't move through the process like you did and they're not as determined i mean like you went through a six-month program and then put your yourself in another program for a year you know everybody's not going to do it that way because you know so when you're working with someone that can't see the light per se and get to you know get to the point that you got to where they can look back and say hey i, I came out of this you know is that is that does that make you feel like you know i I can't reach them. Like, how how is it? That part. Um, so by the grace of God, I have not experienced one of those encounters, you know. Um, okay. Everyone, you know, they're open, they're willing, you know, um, they're trying, they want it, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Um, but I would imagine if I did, I, I all I can say is, you know, I know where I was in and out of so many different programs, you know what I mean? And and, mm -hmm. and maybe what, what did those counselors feel like? Well, mm -hmm tools were provided you know what I mean mm -hmm. conversations were had and you know what all I can do is just pray for that person because they they may not be at their bottom they may still have to touch okay. that stove some more mm -hmm. you know um and it's just one of those things and you know and, and even as counselors you know or who are dealing with you know family uh therapy and and divorces and and you know those different things you provide what you provide and it's for that that person to to take take heed, take hold to do that self-work because even, even being out there and obtaining services, it's still up to you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's like, you know, I can go and get this whole diet regimen and, you know, am I going to eat these cookies? Am I going to work out? You know, yeah. everything kind of it's, yeah. it's still up to me, you know? And, and so it's the same difference. It's the same difference with anything in life. You know, that saying, you know, a person can help you get a job, but it's up to you to keep it. Yeah. Same thing. Same kind of difference. <laughs> yeah. So with the postpartum and perinatal care, um, are you finding a lot of women coming in for assistance for that? Yeah, you know. Um, Do they, I mean, I feel like a lot of times women don't even realize what they're struggling with, you know, so. Um, you know, we're in a present day and time where a lot of the stigmas surrounding mental health are, are being <laughs> yes. lifted, right? Yeah. Um, and folks are wanting to seek and obtain some sort of help, some sort of assistance, some sort of guidance. Uh -huh. And so it's, it's really been a, a, a phenomenal thing. In fact, um, 
in May, me and my, um, my organization, we did a 24-hour broadcast. Uh, we had a slew of different professionals that um, for a 24-hour span of time, we talked about perinatal postpartum. We had, you know, testimonials. You know, I, um, mm -hmm. a business associate who's a doctor even was transparent that, you know, right after having her baby, she didn't even want to get out of bed. Mm -hmm. She was like, Tim, I was in the same clothes for days and my husband was like, what's wrong with you kind mm -hmm. of thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, and just, you know, so many of the these different professionals um, were able to speak their truths to it. Why? Because we want to heighten the awareness around it. And, mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, people are being more forthcoming, you know, and what we're doing now is working to train providers mm -hmm. to look for signs, you know, and symptoms yeah. and make certain that they have a Rolodex of resources that they can refer a person out to. And so, you know, um, our goal is, you know, just making certain that we're able to connect with those OBGYNs mm -hmm. and we're able to connect with some of those colleges because, you know, you think about a student that's in college or they're a parent, you know, they yeah. trying to have a job, you know, like things kind of get off kilter mm -hmm. there, right? And so just letting them know that there's a tribe, right? And that they can resource, that can help them press through while they're trying to balance out life. That's one of my... um my different sayings that I do say, because life is a lot, you know, a it, lot, it, a lot, a lot. I mean, and, I say know, all the time, one of the things that I regret ever saying is I'll be so glad when I get grown. <laughs> like, what was I thinking? <laughs> That part, right? You know, and, and so it is, you know, just being that support, you know, sometimes individuals don't want to go to their churches, mm -hmm. you know, for, mm -hmm. for you know, shame or embarrassment and things like that. Mm -hmm. And so it's just once we've more. Gotta, we've got to change that narrative because the church is going to have to be a part of the healing process. We that and I told another guest, this has been a theme for a while. Almost every guest has somehow or another kind of, you know, uh, weaved that in that into the conversation and we've got to get our church our churches are, are needing to get more involved because we need them yeah, yeah. no you're absolutely right um yeah so there's a lot of different moving pieces behind it mm -hmm. um but one of the things that i am seeing is that we're getting more individuals coming forth and even um non-birthing parents right and so when mm -hmm. we talk about some dads, you know, because you're supposed to be a man and, you know, you're yeah. this, this, and that. Yeah. And so for the dads that, you know, do take part in raising their, their children and so forth, they too are starting to come forth and saying, whoa, this is pretty heavy. Mm -hmm. And then some of the things that we've learned as well is that, you know, when, when grandma has to raise those grandbabies because of whatever's happening out there with the parent, you know, and, and what they go through, right? And then other things with anxiety for um, non-birthing parents where, oh my gosh, I'm adopting this, this child, right? And so I have a neighbor up the block and her and her partner um, are adopting a child from a 14-year-old who got pregnant. Mm -hmm. And she was like, Tam, what do I do? This isn't that. I'm like, okay, first I need you to breathe. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And and then we'll we'll work through everything else. So there's a lot of things on the horizon. Yeah, uh, I, I'd like to hear more about that. But I'd also like to know what brought you into the space of caring about uh, the mental health of parents. Um, we'll talk about that when we come back from break on the other side of break on 94.7 FM. We'll be back in a moment. Thank you for sticking around with us on 94.7 FM. We are talking to Tam McRoy and we, she is sharing her story about what she does for the community, her organization. Um, tell me about how you got into this space of caring about the mental health of, of uh, parents. Um, yeah, so it, it really started for me and um, I started working at a psychologist's office um, and, you know, being his practice administrator, just sitting in and, and observing and working through different things or whatever have you. And then I um, went into working for a mental health facility. Right. And, 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 and so it was just like constantly finding myself into these spaces and then being active in a community and just hearing some of the cries and some of the needs of citizens. And it was like, well, what can I do? Mm -hmm. you know, and, and so forth and so on, or just, you know, being on different boards and committees and so forth, doing my part 
Um, so that's how that kind of rolled out for me. Mm -hmm. And and then, you know, once more with this assignment, God gave me this cross to bear. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. um, and, and what I personally went through in doing once more that self-work and learning, oh, that was that. And, and that's why that happened. And oh, and, and this is how that, you know, so it, it really kind of took its own shape and, and became its own life form. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and so it was my... Um, it's, it, I had to do something. Uh -huh. I had to help um, and put something in place, you know, in a formalized method in which I can actually reach the masses. Uh -huh. I love it that you take these this holistic approach to the work that you do. Um, you know, we love all these buzzwords and buzz phrases. And one has been, you know, people will say, oh, you know, it's more of a wraparound program. And in my mind, I feel like wraparound is an approach. It's not a program. It's an approach. It's a strategy, right? And I love it that that's what you do. Um, you're looking at everything that involves a person being whole. Yeah. And, and I love that. Thank you. Um, you know, I, I would be remiss if I if I didn't mention, you know, that I'm I'm part of a women's ministry group. And and so, you know, when we were just talking about how the church has to take, you know, a level of accountability and mm -hmm. help and, and and nurture, you know, it's like, yeah, for one, you know, it's not just in the in the building, you know what I mean? We need to make certain that we are reaching the masses yeah. and doing some level of evangel evangelistic work mm -hmm. and so forth. And so it's, you know, that partnership with the, the women of worth mm -hmm. and, you know, being able to bring that in as needed for anyone that may be in that hurt space, you know, the, the mm -hmm. church hurt that we talk about sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's totally a holistic approach that's being had. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when, when I, um, when I, when I introduced you at the beginning of the show, um, I saw that you were on a board for an alopecia support group. Speak to that. How did that yeah, come out? What's that all about? Um, I have alopecia, right? Hence my fancy hairdo. Mm -hmm. um, and and so uh, it's something that's hereditary. My Rocking mom, it. Uh, Rocking it. Okay. <laughs> I'm jealous yeah. for real. And I mean that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so my mom had it and my grandma had it and my aunt who's still living, she has it. But for them, they're started in their late 40s, early 50s. Mine started in my late 20s. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, we're talking about a, a decade plus ago and it wasn't really popular to be a bald headed woman, a bald headed black woman. Mm -hmm. And I was a bald headed gap to black woman. And, mm -hmm. you know, just like you start thinking about so many different things in which we like, oh, my gosh, my hair is my crown and my, my glory. Yeah. And, and so forth. And um, but yeah, so in 2011, I um I attempted to come out of my little hair hat and I, I did it for about a year, very uncomfortable in my skin. You know, I was going through an unhealthy marriage. I was trying to assert myself in corporate America, just you know. Yeah, it didn't work. Mm -hmm. Um, so I retreated back into my wigs and my weaves, and then um, in 2019, it was just right after a birthday of mine, and I was looking at myself in the mirror, and I was like, "Girl, you need to be real with yourself." You know what I mean? Because it just really got to one of these mentally crumbling moments where I wouldn't look at myself in the mirror unless I had hair on my head. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I would shift quick from the scarf to the wig, you know what I mean? Or get a sew in, you know, so that, you know, and nothing moves. And interesting that you call it like coming out to the world. Like, yeah. that's interesting that you, you phrase it that way. Yeah, it, 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 it was, you know, um, for me and for so many. Like a hiding, like patients. you were in hiding, you know, because mm -hmm. of your hair. Because of our hair, you know, mm -hmm. um, and, and so. In 2019, when I decided to take this walk and, 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 you know, move forward in my journey, be true to myself, right? Mm -hmm. You keep hearing me talk about self-actualization, self-work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This was part of it. Mm -hmm. um, it opened so many different arenas for me where I found other alopecians, you know what I mean? And, and learned more about it. You know, it doesn't discriminate women, children, men. Mm -hmm. um, can you receive it? Black, white, Spanish, whatever, you know what I mean? Um, and so connecting with another um, fellow alopecia, it was like, let's create a support group for us, you know? You and created this support group. 
Wow. We created a support group. Um, and so we were underneath the National Alopecia Areata Foundation. Um, and then she branched off and created an actual nonprofit. Um, and, and once more, you know, we've been able, just in being true to ourselves, it's led to opportunities for modeling, you know, to work with different legislation, um, you know, lobbying for different policies behind different things and so forth and so on. And we're able to, you know, when we're talking about ministry, that thing looks different for everyone, right? So this is its yeah. own ministry because, you know, we could be out. And um, and I say we because just two weeks ago, um, I was in Minneapolis. Um, and a group of us alopecians get together there and we march in their Juneteenth parade. And so here, you know, we we consider ourselves, you know, as pioneers because we remember when it was frowned upon and and we were, you know, made fun of. But yet we have people in, cheering and people come up to us. Oh, my gosh. You know, I couldn't do that. And, you know, some of, up some of their <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thank you. They'll lift up some of their wig and be like, I got it, too. You know what I mean? And so we're able to kind of help minister to someone in a sense, right? And help them in their journey. And so when we formed these support groups and we would meet in person prior to COVID, you know, we would have people come in bald headed, come in with their wigs, feel comfortable to take it off during the meeting, put it back on before they leave kind of thing, mm -hmm. right? And it's just all about telling our story and supporting each other on where we're at. And 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 it's it's truly been a blessing. Yeah, and 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 back to the holistic approach that you take, because see, mental health, mental health, <laughs> yeah, mental health goes along with that, right? You know, yeah. mentally, because of what society says has said, we we need to look the way we need to look. It was it was difficult for me because you know, and just in the corporate world, to to go natural. I mean, I can't imagine what it's like to worry about not having hair, because for me, I was afraid to walk into the office one day when I decided to just be natural and not worry about a perm anymore. You know, I didn't feel like society and media made me feel like I wasn't, even if I had a suit on, I wasn't dressed up anymore because my hair was kinky, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't the straight, but yeah. So it's amazing. It's amazing what those things can do to us emotionally. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, yeah. regrettably, we we lost um a, a a teenager who just was at their wits end and being bullied in school, and they committed suicide. Right, and so with um with this walk, you know, we tried to mentor the children because the alopecia once more doesn't discriminate, and just try to help encourage and inspire and uplift them because yeah, um, it's a lot. It's a, it's a heavy mantle to carry. Mm -hmm. You've, you've talked about a lot of things that, I mean, you're doing so many, I don't even know how you do everything that you're doing, but talk, talk about some of the things, some more of the things that you're doing to combat matters, similar matters, different things in the community. Absolutely. And, and so um, I'm a part of the NAACP for the Seminole County branch here in um, mm -hmm. Central Florida. And I just recently became elected as the prison um, chair. And, and so yeah. as, the committee chair, you know, just working, um, and I call them loved ones that are re-entering society, either from jail or prison, just working to make certain that they have certain resources that are specific for them. Because what we see sometimes is that they kind of get coupled in with, you know, being a homeless population or just, you know, whatever mm -hmm. that looks like mm -hmm. when it's, you know what, there are, they are a set specific population that needs, um, conversations a little differently right mm -hmm. and and what why I say this is because um last year I find myself doing some pro bono work uh mm -hmm. for for individuals that had just been released and so I had a a, a client reach out to me and was like Tam you know one of my homeboys you know just came home um and he can't get a job he wants to open up uh um it was a a poultry company. And it's like, uh, you okay. know, that's not my thing. Uh -huh. But, you know, once more, you know, my heart and, and what I am. So I helped this gentleman. He had did double homicide, 26 years. 
Mm. that this gentleman had did um and he didn't you know he didn't know nothing you know what i mean mm -hmm. zoom zoom what you know what mm -hmm. I mean? kind of a thing right <laughs> and so forth um and so you know what i'm learning in, is that sometimes this population of folks don't even know how to engage with their children so mm -hmm. i know from ways in which i had to work and build a relationship with my son right mm -hmm. um and in regards to coming back and reestablishing things so yeah let me tell you how you can do this right um and, and let me go ahead and introduce you to some life skills that are going to meet you at where you're at you know we mm -hmm. don't have to get you super advanced mm -hmm. and you know you don't have to do a formula in excel but let me introduce you to excel mm -hmm. and what that you know how to navigate that mm -hmm. and you know let's work to try to get you um an employment with a, an employer who is open to understanding that you made some mistakes and you know what you have your mind in a correct manner and you just need that shot mm -hmm. why because i i know right and mm -hmm. so it's those kind of things that have truly become my heartbeat and mm -hmm. making certain that you know once more i'm doing my due diligence um at the end of the day i i truly do want to hear god say well done and i want the next person to have that opportunity as well i think we're mm -hmm. all supposed to give it for um pay what is it pay it forward pay it forward Mm -hmm. that part <laughs> um, what was it like rebuilding your relationship with your son and how vocal is he about the times when you weren't around absolutely and and that's um so gosh you know when I started using drugs and 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 really you know my family stepped in was like okay we got it from here kind of a thing mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. um he was you know I just turned one you know, and, and so um, I am very fortunate where, you know, I was able to get reacquainted, you know, because of my parents and my in-laws um, bringing him around and um, and then, you know, working my way back to being able to um, raise him. And so <laughs> I've been able to raise him since he was entering um, kindergarten you know, and, and so forth, you know, it, it, it's really, you know, the full story there. So um, me and his dad had this conversation. He was like, one of us has to be a parent. Mm -hmm. And it was like, I get it. You know what I mean? And so mm -hmm. forth, but um, he didn't sustain. Right. And so when I started getting myself together, his, his mom and sister was actually raising our son. So when we're talking about trauma and, 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 and how mm -hmm. that looks for childhood mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. matters and so forth, it was a lot, you know what I mean? And I was nervous on eggshells, you know, like, am I going to damage this child anymore? Mm -hmm. And um, just having the support of my family members, my in-laws, you know, and, and the different programs and learning tools and so forth. And, and God, you mm -hmm. know, it was for me, it was like at a, at um, an early age in which he was able to, um, kind of understand because when he told me that he thought I was his aunt and he was confused why I was being left with him mm -hmm. you know what I mean and so forth and so on it was like okay I can have this conversation mm -hmm. and gosh I want to say that maybe he was probably around six when he mentioned that to me you know and this mm -hmm. was after me having him back and and so forth and so I I've been totally transparent with my son you know what I mean and have had conversations and use them as forewarning hey let me tell you how things can work out if you go down that road kind of a thing, right? Yeah. Especially yeah. being a single mom and 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 um of a young man and so forth. And and so just I've learned for me, you know, and I don't know how this may work for all, but because I was so transparent, you know, because you know, I um just took a total different approach with my parenting. Like that's my ace blue coon right there. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's I my buddy. Gonna... Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Cause I don't want to cause because I was just thinking no, like no. It, it wasn't it wasn't the traditional parenting because you were transparent. I think I think I found that I was more like I had to keep things away from my kids. Like don't tell them this, you know, tell them don't do drugs, tell them don't do th this or don't do that, right? But but when you can tell them don't do it. And, and I know you shouldn't because I did. And this is what happened. That part. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I mean, even if you haven't been through it, but you could say, listen, you know, I'm, I'm telling you this because I, I, maybe you had, you know, somebody that's going, you know, going through it or whatever, but, but not that you're trying to control their lives or, you know what I mean? Yeah, you no, don't no. Want to control the the narrative of what of what happens with them. You want to because we love them, but at the same time, 
I think we have to stop keeping secrets is all I'm saying. No, you said it perfectly. And and what I've learned in, in being open is that, you know, it's allowed him to kind of look at things in a different lens himself. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. he, he knows what it's like um, to go without a mom, you know what I mean? To go through different things and mm -hmm. so forth, you know, um, and, and then even with his dad, you know what I mean? And, and because now his dad is not even able to just being a knucklehead. Right. Mm -hmm. And so when I get so many compliments, oh my gosh, you raised such a great young man. And it's because, you know, of me being open, you know, of, of mm -hmm. us having those raw conversations, mm -hmm. you know, on what it looks like to touch that stove. Mm -hmm. If you want to touch it, I'll be here to love on you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but let me just tell you how that's going to work out for you and kind of a thing. And and um, I, I, I'm really fortunate. My son has never even had a fight in school. I mean, and he, wow. he'll be 20 in December. Very great young man. Very uh, another nerd. I'm, I'm, I, I'm a geek. He's a nerd. Yeah. You know, um, <laughs> but yeah, I couldn't even ask for a better child. God has really blessed me. What what would you say to and 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 I almost don't want to ask this question. I ask it often to the younger Tam. Um, and the reason why I almost don't want to ask is because I think you and I would both agree our journey is our journey and you landed where you are because of your journey. But what would you tell her if you could go back and talk to her? Um, you know, live and let God. And, and, and I say that because, you know, I, I was, I was semi-raised in a church, you know what I mean? I know God, you know, praise the Lord kind of thing, but I didn't really have that, that spiritual walk. And, and so, you know, I, I feel like even after I came out of some of those, those dark moments in my earlier um, adulthood, you know, I still wasn't as connected as I was, as I've been. Mm -hmm. you know, within the past decade, within the past, even five years, within the past year, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And so forth. And so um, if, if the younger Tam um, would lean more on God, as opposed to herself, mm. girl, <laughs> no telling what she, what she'd be doing. She'd be doing a uh -huh. billion more things. <laughs> any, any final thoughts, Tam? Um, you know, I, I want to tell people, just take things one day at a time. You know, my mom used to say onward and upward and just try to keep it all copacetic. None of us are perfect. You know what I mean? We need to get out that mindset of, oh my gosh, I got to walk this straight line, this, this, and that, can't lean too hard to the, you know, give yourself some grace. There's, there's always going to be that next minute, you know, that you can go ahead and put corrective measures into place. And once more, lean on God. <laughs> rest in him mm -hmm. so for the people in your area in your listening area that may want to reach out to you or to one of your organizations how would they do that absolutely um i always tell folks just go to my holding company um which is tam's favor t-a-m-s favor f-a-v-o-r.com uh you'll be able to connect with any one of my um my companies we'll get okay. you going from there and you're in what area again I'm in Central Florida in the Orlando area. Okay. In these days and times, proximity is not a thing. Not a thing. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. You're exactly right. Thus, you and I doing this interview. <laughs> so thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you coming to share your story, share about your organizations. I appreciate the work that you're doing. And I also appreciate the listening audience coming back every Saturday and ask that you come back next Saturday, same chat channel, same chat time right here on Dr. The Doctor in the chat room on 94.7 FM. We will see you then.